the train clock. The train club, the train club over here. Oh, what the? Who's calling me? I'm over here on the right, the train club. Who's saying that? Oh, no. Please don't say that's who I think it is. That's right, it's me. Scruff the Scruncher. What do you want from me? I already made two movies about you. And I gave you a big role in my Christmas special. What do you want? I want you to do a review on me, the train club. Aw, oh, come on, man. Seriously? Just a plain and simple review? Here? In my basement? Those types of videos are so old. Oh, this isn't going to be in your basement. You're going to be traveling very far away. But you're not going to do it alone. Someone else is going to help you. And he's bringing a personal friend of mine. Alright then. I wonder who I'm going to be doing this review with. I did it. I made it to Strasbourg. <sighs> I know. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is the train club here, and today I'm here with Reneus Productions. Hi. IRL. Oh, that, and a uh, super creepy looking bug. Oh, God. W, I guess. Anyway, uh, today we're just going to be doing a sort of classic 2016 style type of review. Yeah, in which we meet up in some random location that is not Strasbourg, and we film review. So, And today yeah. we're going to be reviewing the Trackmaster Scruff and Whiff. So my name is The Train Club and I'm going to start off with telling you guys about the Trackmaster Scruff. The Trackmaster Scruff is a model made by Fisher Price in 2011 after he was introduced prior in the previous season, season 14, in the episode Thomas and Scruff. Unfortunately, my model of Scruff has taken a bit of a beating after it starred in my two movies, Scruff's Quest and Scruff Goes to Disney since I actually decided to do something with the character. So first, let's have a look at the face on this item. The face is pretty well designed and pretty accurately represents the one from the show. The side of him has the diagonal line design as seen on his actual model along with his nameplate. Scruff also has some pretty neat water pressure or gauge um, pieces on the side of him, which is a nice touch. The top of him simply has his funnel, his dome, which again on mine is rather worn out, and the switch. The other thing I noticed about this item is that for some reason the coupling on the back is much longer than any of the other models, at least, that were released at that time. The bottom of Scruff has his name and the code, X3757. Overall, for a character that doesn't actually do much in the show, which is quite a shame, I think this model is really good. Imagine, Maybe one of their best at the time. Imagine filming for Scruff's Quest 3. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, I'll see you later. Bye.
All right, everyone, I am Renee's Productions, and I'm going to be doing the second half of this review, that of course being the Trackmaster Whiff. Now, uh, for those who don't know, uh, the scruff seen in this review is actually Noah's, and this one is, or this Whiff, is mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and review it. Yeah. Now, for the keen eye among you, you may have noticed that this is a Fisher Price era Whiff. Now, this is given away by the fact that this whiff does not have cab windows. When Hit Toys Company released him in 2008, he did have cab windows. Uh, for some reason, Fisher Price decided that they weren't going to put them on. Thanks, Fisher Price. You suck. Fisher Price, you lazy. Now, despite not having cab windows, the Fisher Price whiff is still a fine item. Uh, he's very well detailed, uh, with a very nice face. Uh, apart from the fact he doesn't have eyebrows, uh, it is very good. Yeah, uh, his, gla uh, his glasses are nicely molded on there, and though my particular model has a little bit of paint smearing, it's not that big of a deal, and he's still a nice model. Now, before we continue with the review, I'm going to put something in here for my good friend Josh Productions 07. I'm going to teach him how to do something that he should really consider doing, and it's very simple. Mm-hmm. Yes. Josh, if you... Now... The top of Whiff is pretty simplistic, but that's honestly fine because it doesn't need to be like anything like spectacular because you never really see the top of this model in the show. Uh, the running board is red when it should be white, so that's kind of annoying, but like this is Fisher Price we're talking about, so you know, we have to lower, uh, lower our expectations accordingly. Uh, he's got some nice coal detail up top and he's got a very nice uh, back sticker. Uh, the weathering on these stickers is very good, and it makes them look uh, very well detailed. However, the contrast of him not having any kind of weathering detail on the top and sides, it's a bit jarring, but it's not that bad. Overall, I think that this model is... Eh, it's okay. The wheel configuration isn't very accurate, and the way to get inside of this model is kind of annoying. Uh, it's the same thing with uh, Percy, where instead of just having like the slide down tabs on the side, you have to actually unscrew them, which, I, I don't know, not a big fan. But overall, I'd say that this is a fine model, and I really don't have any major complaints with it. Other than the eyebrows, like why, where are the eye, where, where are, where, mm, <laughs> Alright, so thanks you guys for watching that review, um, it was really fun to film. And I especially want to thank Renee's Productions for meeting up with me at Strasbourg and not leaving me alone and reminding me that I am super... Anyway, um, so thanks, Renaeus. I really had fun, and I know you did too. It was awesome, and I really hope we can do it again sometime in the future and do another video like this. It was an honor meeting you, and it was a fun weekend in general. So thank you guys for watching and bye for now.